going on everyone it's Corey from the break evens here with another podcast and as always i'm here with jack hello so today's podcast top 10 defenders and midfielders so what's happened is jack and i have gone away without knowing each other's picks we've rated our top 10 defenders and midfielders in order of total points last year we did averages this year we're going to do total points um, so you'll find out if we're completely insane or if we're stock standard uh, boring. So um, I, I'm guessing Jack's probably done a few riskier picks because that's what he likes to do. So can I? Uh, is there any confirmation on those allegations? I mean, there is a couple, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I thought so. Um, but before we get into that, a few things to get out of the way at the start. First is our Break Evens Unlimited group. We have over 100 people, which is insane. We've got 109. So thank you to everyone who has joined. We've knocked our 100 um, team mark out of the ground so the code for that if you haven't joined is four three two eight five six don't get to join that let's try and get 150 by the start of round one that would be pretty awesome um our socials you can find us on twitter at break evens pod there's been a lot going on there polls we've been trying to just um add into discussions a lot more um this past week with all the cracky games over and done with um so don't uh, forget to give us a follow on there. There's a lot going on. And on YouTube, uh, search the break evens. You will find us there. Um, we've hit our 50 subscriber mark over there. So we're trying to get to 100. We're at 62 at the moment. So let's see how we can go with that 100 mark. Alrighty. That's all done and dusted. So let's get into it. So, Jack, what's going to happen? We'll, we'll start from number 10. I like that. We'll make our way down to the um, number one. So, Jack, who is your 10th highest defender? There's a siren. Oh, no, not, not the siren again. Can you hear it? <laughs> it's screaming, <laughs> James Harden, help! Because Houston, we've got a problem. <laughs> I am going Danny Boy. Um, I reckon with Carl Amon gone from Port Adelaide, more of the ball um, will be going for him. We saw a lot. They'd go, it was a big split between Houston and Amon going from defence to the forward because they're on either wing um, and they're both amazing kicks of the football. Um, I think with Amon gone and Houston to Ability to hit targets from that halfback wing row, I reckon he'll get more of it. Um, so I think he's, and I think he's going to be more of a consistent scorer this year, which is going to push him up to that tenth spot, which I believe he was around that thirteenth to fifteenth spot anyway. But yeah, I think he's going to push up to number ten. Yep, nice. He was someone I was thinking at number ten, but I had I had him probably eleventh, to be honest, but. You'll be happy with my number 10 pick, and that's Nick Vloshin. Oh, my king. From the Richmond Football Club. So Talk about risky. <laughs> he's, he's a very consistent scorer um, in Supercoach. There's, um, his only problem is he seems to get a concussion or a one- to two-week niggle injury here and there. But i'm gonna tip that he's gonna play all 23 games this season he intercepts marks. So. <laughs> he, 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 he intercepts marks he likes to go for a run he likes to kick the ball he takes some kickouts. i don't know if um any of our viewers watched the richmond north melbourne game but dan rioli took the majority but vlosson was the next next best um I, I just think he has a really super coach friendly role, so I've gone with Nick Vlosson at number ten. I mean, um, that that's a very great pick. It should be number two, but that's okay. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Um, all right, who's who's number nine? Number nine is a man I am massive on and have been, and it's a red man. 
Kuku to first Grayson. Um, I he showed last year with the um his ball use and his run that he can score hundreds for fun. Um, I just reckon this year they saw his breakout towards the end of last year, and I can see Brad Scott wanting to elevate that, not negate it. Yep. Um, so I think they're gonna, you know, use him a lot more. Um, to have that run off the half back, get that, uh, get those inside fifties, um, get those dangerous kicks into the center of the ground, which can be like a pass to pass to assist or a pass to assist, which counts as a score involvement and points. Um, so I think he's game's going to elevate because they're going to, what's the word? They're going to utilize his uh, abilities that he's shown towards the end of last year for a full season. Yep. Yep. And I think the game plan where they're looking to apparently switch a bit more, which didn't really happen in the Pracky match, but apparently they're going in that direction. So if that does happen, he can score highly. Um, I've gone Hayden Young from Fremantle. It seems like he's getting more kickouts this year, um, and I think that's because Luke Ryan might be uh, made to play a key position defending role, which isn't going to free him up. And I think Hayden Young is, I guess, the next next best once Ryan moves on. So I think they're going to try to develop Hayden Young now. They need to, I think, because if they don't, someone's going to pick him up in the next couple of years and they'll lose him. Um, so if he's on majority uh, kick-ins, kick-outs, how, however you want to say it, um, he's got easy points there. He's worked on his intercept marking um, and you know when when to run off his player. So we could see a bump in points there. I just think it's coming, it's all coming up Millhouse, really. So I've got Hayden Young in at number nine. Who's your number eight, Jack? So my number eight pick is Yo Gabba Gabba. <laughs> um, very risky. It is. Um, I don't expect him to play eight games, which is where he's ranked, <laughs> but. I'm basing it off a full season. I've been told to base it off a full season. Yep. And if everyone's going to play a full season. And if Elliot Yo plays a full season, I feel like eight might even be a bit dirty on him. I think he could be even higher. Um he's got the role. He showed in the um unofficial pracky that he's taking the absolute piss. Um Getting heaps of the ball, using it well, getting away injury free. That's the main thing. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, with Elliot Yo, um, if he's fit and firing with that role, he can easily average 105 plus, in my opinion, which is obviously a lot of total score points. Um, w- which is why I've chucked him in risky because his strings will probably, uh, what do you call it? Rip, rip apart, rip off. Just yeah. <laughs> disconnect. Um, yeah. So many words we can use. Um, but I'm hoping and I believe that he will have a good, healthy season because most people with um, soft tissue injuries, especially hamstrings, are like fought, they go like four or five years really bad and all of a sudden they're as strong as can be. And um, a prime example of that is Dylan Grimes had – injury problem hamstring problem for the first five years now he's barely missed a game with injury apart from last season he missed a couple but um the same can obviously happen with elliot yo the danger period as i'd like to call it is over and it's just like he's a new man and he's gonna be fit and firing with his role yep so um we've based it off if we think they're gonna play X amount of games. So Jack's backing him in. Um, so 
I don't have him in my top 10 just because I don't think he's going to play the, a full season, but he definitely could. And if I knew he was, he'd definitely be um, up on the list. So my number eight is Adam Saad from, from Carlton. From what I saw in the Pracky game, is he was the main distributor out of that half back. Um, in saying that, Doherty did play half back as well, especially in the first half, didn't get any CBAs at all, so he was back there. But I think he was just going uh, along with the the motions there. Sad, we know he loves to run, loves to kick, loves to carry the ball, so you get metres gained, points there. If he hits a target, you got there, and you can also sneak it around the uh, the back of a mark and um, get a handball, um, and then kick it fifty five meters for a goal. So, um, I I think he took that that big step last um, last season, and I think he's going to continue that. Not go too much higher, but I think he'll be around there about again anyway. So. Um, all right, Jack, who is your number seven? Well, I think you're going to be a little shocked with this, especially because you had this player a bit lower. Okay. And that's Hayden Young. Yep. Um, I, like you said, he uh, looks to have most kickouts, um, looks to take his game to the next level. But the thing with Hayden Young as well is, like your Sards, your Houston's, your Redmonds, he can run for days, and he can kick a big ball and hit a target. Um, I really like the look of Hayden Young. You spoke mostly about his stuff, so I don't want to uh, copy and paste, but um, I think he's gonna have a, I guess you can say a breakout and have a big season. Yep, yep, and. What's going to happen is when we get down to those top four, top three, we're going to have a lot of the same players, even top five probably. So, um, you know, if, if, if it is doubling up, we'll just add any, anything different to what yeah. the other person said. So, yep, um, number seven for me is Jordan Ridley. Um, with the news, again, of that slower switching gameplay that Essendon's supposed to play, but didn't show in the Pratty match. He, the, the ball's going to go through Ridley every time. He's going to get a good amount of uh, kick-ins slash kick-outs. Um, he'll, he'll, he'll get more than Redmond, but Redmond will still take a lot. But I think we've, we've mm-hmm. seen Ridley play in, in that role before. And he was averaging 130 up until he, he got concussed, and then Redmond sort of took his, his role that that season. Um, so I'm expecting a back to best role for Ridley and season for Ridley. So I've got him in at number seven there. All right, Jack, who is your number six? One number six is Samuel Doherty. Nice. Um. What, what do I need to say? He's been up there top five um, every year for the last 10 years, it feels like. It feels like every year he's the must-have player. Obviously, he's had years in between where he's missed with ACL, cancer, you know, a in, couple injuries. But every year he's been fit, he's always been a top defender. And I don't think that changes... Um, like you said, he's meant to be playing some more midfield, played off that half back, but um it doesn't matter. He's gonna get the ball. He's a big kick, can kick a goal as he uh showed round one last year. Um big game player, um, very consistent scoring as well. So that's why I've got Sam Doherty in at six. Yep, nice, nice. Um I have Jack Sinclair at number six. He was the number one scoring player in the defense last last year. So to have him at number six is probably a big call. But I think with the emergence of Wanganine Miller of that half bank, at uh, half bank, half back, um, I th- think Sinclair 
isn't going to score as well as he did last year. I think he might even drop as far as a 115 um, to 110, um, which, again, isn't bad. But the players that I have above him, I think that they're going to score more overall. Obviously, he has that, that big, big ceiling, which most of these players don't have. You know, he can smash out a 150, 160 um, if he has one of those big games. And he rarely drops under 100. And when he does, it's usually um, in the 90s anyway. So yes. um, he looks to have that similar role. Um, but maybe people might go to him a bit more this year. So you might see some uh, forward tags on him. But still... Still a great selection for our sides, and someone will probably be looking to get in at some stage. So um, that's my number six. All right, Jack, who is your number five? So funny enough, my number five is Jack Sinclair. Okay. So it's pretty much the same as you. Um, I think there's gonna, going to be a decline in his score, which is why he's dropped. But I can also see a massive improvement in one player's scoring which is why he's dropped so low okay um he's obviously going to be one of the must-haves unless um the roles are reversed and yo has a fit year and he does his hamstring hamstrings um he's going to be someone that we're all looking to get in at the end of the season and it will be for cheaper than what he's priced at now which is the best thing about it yep Yep, so it looks like we've done the swap route because my number five is Sam Doherty. Um, as Jack said, super reliable, super con consistent. Um, he's always up there. And I think if he gets the 30% CBAs, which is what he did um, after half time in the practice, practice matches, he can easily bump up his scoring by five to 10 points. Um, that's on average, that is, not over the season, obviously, um, which means he's just got, got to score more points. So I've that's why I put him above Sinclair. I think he has a higher scope than what Sinclair does. And as I said, Sinclair might have a small um, decrease, in my opinion, anyway. So we've done the swap there. I think we might have the same person here at number four. Jack, who you got number four? I've got Jordan Dawson. Oh, Okay, we don't have the same person there. Um, he showed last year he can be a big player for Adelaide. Um, I do have some doubts of him being higher with being a new captain, how that's going to affect him. Obviously, it doesn't affect the role or anything, but it affects his mentality. Yep. At being a captain to just a normal player, it's a massive jump. Um, he's still going to be very good. I'm not saying he's going to turn to shit. Um, he could even be better than what I'm expecting. He could thrive under the captaincy role. Um, but I feel like the extra mentality as that for having to be that leader might affect him a little bit in his super coach scoring. Um, if it's... Um, you know, because he takes kick outs if it's, oh, let's just say um, Brady Smith isn't in the game. Let's give him a couple of kick outs, try and bring him into the game. Doing something to bring other players into a game which would drop his scoring, we could see a bit more as he's that captain and he wants everyone to be performing well as a cohesive unit. Yeah. So I think his scoring drops a little bit. Um, well, it might improve, but not improve enough to be hired in the fourth spot. Yep. Um, on on that, in most cases, you, you can see a slight d decrease. I don't think it's going to happen with Dawson, though, but that's just my opinion. Like I said, um, it might happen. It might. He could go better. Yeah. I'm going risky in a way that I think it's going to decrease, but you can also be risky by putting him one or two because you think he's going to thrive under it. So it's yeah. like... It's risky either way. Yeah. Um, my number four is the Brownlow medalist, Nick Dacos. Um, he's just a jet. <laughs> <laughs> um, so 
for those who saw the Pracky match, um, first quarter, he didn't get near it. Um, but then he worked his way in into it nicely. And then by the third, fourth quarter, he was back to the same Nick Dacos. Um, 50%-ish uh, CBAs, which is good for his scoring, I think. Um, but as we know, more CBAs does not mean more points. But in this case, I think it does. Um, he's still going to get the cheap, easy possessions in defence. Which but, we all love. Which we all love. But that contested ball, um, the chance to get more inside 50s, I think he's just going to go absolutely bananas. I think he's going to go at 110 average. Um, which uh, I think is roughly around the same as Doherty, but I think Dacos has the better ceiling to go a bit higher for his top score than what Doherty does. So that's why I've put him in at number four there. Um, who's your number three, mate? Yeah, so my number three is Nick Dacos. Um, like you said, the CBAs and stuff, um, I've... Pete, and you said some people it doesn't work like uh, your Jack Crisps, but I think it's the opposite with him. I think he's the um, person that they're going to look to get the ball to from the centre bounces to take the ball forward. Um, Tom Mitchell's going to, you know, he's going to get down and under and handball it out, and I reckon they're going to look for Nick Dacos uh, most times than not. Um, but he also has the ability to get his head in and under and um, get that ball to handball out. Um but, so I think his scoring is going to enhance. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. He. Uh, his inside and outside game is pretty strong. He likes to spread from the contest and get forwards. So there's definitely more scope for for points there. So I totally agree. Um, we've did we've done the switcheroo again. I've gone Dawson at number three. Um, taking over the captaincy as Jack said. Um, I don't think that he will improve too much on last year, um, but I think we will see a minor improvement because he did start last year um, pretty slow. He, he had that one um, game ag against Port where he kicked the goal after the siren, and that's that sort of kick-started his, his uh, season. Um, Shocking kick, by the way. Oh, off, off the shin and just... Loaded in, but uh, <laughs> you'll you'll take it anyway. So, um, yeah, main main guy off the half back. Um, hopefully, he keeps that half back role because he pushes up to the wing consistently. I think he goes a bit backwards there. So, Dawson at number three for me. Who's your number two, Jack? Um, the hothead himself, another captain. James Sicily. Um, I I think he was two last year, and I think he's going to produce a similar year and finish two. Um, there's no way you like. There's no real way James Sicily's game can enhance. Like he's already amazing. Got his amazing role. There's nothing he can they can do to help enhance his scoring. Obviously, he can go big and get those 140s, 150s like we've seen, but he's got a role where he thrives in and he just gets that like 115, 120 every game. Um, not only does he get kick-ins, he plays like an intercept marking role. Um, big boot, kicks it long. Um Hits targets most times of the night. He's just got the perfect super coach role, really, for a consistent scoring basis. Yep, totally agree. Um, the only way he gets better is if you think Hawthorne's gotten worse, which they probably have to be honest. But <laughs> <laughs> um, my number two, and it looks like we've done a, a a third flip. I've got Tom Stewart number two. Um, I think he's un underpriced um, because of the injury games. Uh, yeah, he had the concussion early where he scored a 29 or something. So he can definitely go um, another five on his average, which is probably another 70-odd 
um, points, 72, 100 points anyway. Um, he's got the biggest ceiling in that defence. Can go 180 um, and can just go on a run of like 150 plus. So Tom Stewart, intercept marks, kick outs, loves to kick. Um, might get a bit more attention, but I don't think it matters because it's Tom Stewart. So he's in at number two, which means, Jack, your number one is... Aiden Bonner. <laughs> <laughs> he stopped Dusty for two quarters. That is impressive stuff. But no, it is Tom Stewart. <laughs> um, practically what you said, he go, gets 150s, gets 180s for fun. Um, I don't see him getting concussed this year, which negates that 29. And I also don't see him sniping a free Dion Prestia to get four-week suspension. Um, so you take those five games into account, I reckon he's he is, um, if not top two, the highest scoring player last year. Um, obviously, stupidity with the uh, sniping and unfortunate actions with the concussion had him drop a bit. But, um, you yeah, know, Tom Stewart's Tom Stewart. He's going to get those 150s, 180s. You, you look at games like round one Collingwood, you look at his name and you go, I could vice-captain him. I have at the moment. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, it doesn't, like, when he's playing a Hawthorne, you're like, oh, shit, maybe he's not going to go big, but he's still going to find a way to get 100. Yeah. Um, no matter what. But when you see games like Collingwood round one, blockbuster, you know, two big teams, even though one's not really that big, they just think they're big, and that's yeah, Geelong. <laughs> 50,000 fans and you caught out a home stadium. <laughs> um, you know, um, you know, he, he fries in the block like Sicily, uh, Dawson, Dacos, Doherty, fries in the big games. He, d he doesn't fumble under pressure. He seems to be able to mark every ball that gets near him. And uh, we saw last year, he took a specky, and like Mark O'Connor, we're all there like, what the hell did we just witness? And that's what we're all going to be saying when we see him number one this year. Yeah. Um, just on that, he averages 124 at the MCG as well. So, um, yeah. <laughs> not bad. Um, so that means James Sisley is my number one. Not um, Aiden Bonner? No, um, unfortunately not. I, I think... Close. <laughs> I, I, th I think looking at all, all the names we've said, he's most consistent for that 120 plus. Um, you know, your Stewart, Dawson, Dacosses, they can all go to the 90s. I think Sicily, his lows, maybe 110. Um, I like mean, 105. Sic Sicily could go down to the 40s, but that's if Sam Mich Mitchell's a dickhead. Yes. That, that's if he goes forward. I I, <laughs> I I just think you can lock him in for one twenty plus. He's the yeah. captain now, so he's not going to be a dickhead and miss games. I mean, preseason says otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> Two fights um, already. <laughs> I, I think yeah, he's just you can lock him in for for top three. But me personally, think he's top um, of the defenders. So. That's the defenders there. So uh, next we'll do the same with the midfielders. All right, so now we're going to do the same in the midfield. So, Jack, who's your number 10? My number 10 is Noah Anderson. Oh, okay. Um, all these people are big on LDU, Tom Green. They're like, they're going to take the next step forward. I'm thinking... On a like, don't get me wrong. I think they are going to improve. I'm here thinking Noah Anderson. I'm seeing a similar pattern with someone else. I'm seeing a similar pattern in his game, his style of play, and his super coach projections with a certain Andrew Brayshaw. Okay. So, and now I'm not saying he's better than Andrew Brayshaw. I'm not saying he's worse than Andrew Brayshaw. I'm not saying he's Andrew Brayshaw. I'm saying he's Noah Anderson. But, um, I, like, there's similar improvements with his game. Similar, you got to think, similar in both are shit teams with shit midfields. Obviously, you got Took Miller, like, Freo, you had Nat Fife. 
um, that you know uh, star player next to him. Um, we saw a jump into the low 80s to low 100s, which was Noah Anderson the last two years. A jump to 108 to 110, or what was it, 113, whatever it was this year, and. I can see the same happening with Noah Anderson because he's just getting better. He's sh he's showing the same, like I said, the same like projection scales of a certain Andrew Brayshaw, and people were jumping all over him before last season, like he's going to jump, and yet no one is jumping on this where he's showing, if not identical, very similar progression not just in supercoach but also in real life performances as well yep i i think that's just because mr 50 disposal man tom green is around the same price so oh yeah no um, i'm just saying like everyone's saying oh anderson won't do well he might jump a couple of points and it's like where was this with andrew brayshaw a few years ago where he was very, very similar, if not, I like exactly the same at Norrin than is now. Like people, yeah, are... the, the only difference is Brayshaw became that number one midfielder when Anderson isn't. So that's that's where they they differ, in my opinion. Um, anyway, I. I, I do think he is going to, to, to score well. Um, he's not in my top 10. Um, my number 10 is Zachary Merritt, the new uh, captain of the Essendon Football Club. I think we might see an actual full season of Zach Merritt, not just a half season, not just the back half. I think we're going to see a full half of Zach Merritt. Now, the problem is... Looking at the players that I've put, he would have only jumped up to nine anyway, so I'm going to be safe and play him at ten. He gets plenty of the ball. He's one of their best users. He's the captain now, so he's going to have to lead from example. I just think he just scores points. I, that, that's all it comes down to. Is he, he scores points. I, I I can see him bumping up his his average by another three to five points. Um, and as, as I said with my list, I think he could go to a number nine. But yeah, Zach Merritt definitely someone who I'm going to look to get in, especially around around their their buy. So, um, who's number nine for you, Jack? My number nine is a bloke that I mentioned just before in Tom Green. Ooh. Um. So, like, well, like or not like Anderson, he's going to have a jump. I think he has that little extra of a jump because the Giants have lost everyone. Yes. Um, and in everyone, two players. <laughs> but that's still everyone when it comes to the Giants. Um, and I reckon he shows at least three quarters of a season of consistent footy. Not... 25%, not 50%, at least 75%. The extra season, the bigger tank, the uh, big contract extension he just signed, he'd be loving life. Um, and, you know, it's like he's going to be the number one midfielder. It's like he's that guy. Yep. Um, so that's where I think he gets that jump over Anderson a little bit, and that's why he's in my team over Anderson at the moment. Um. Obviously, if I could have both, I would, but money. Um, so, yeah, Tom Green, number nine, he's, I reckon he's a bit more of a consistent season. Maybe not the full full season that we're expecting yet. Maybe that's still a year or two down the track. But we've got to remember, very young, big body, 24 games this year. It's a big ask for anyone, really. It's a new playing field for everyone. And everyone play twenty well be twenty three weeks, but twenty a uh, twenty four week season now. Yeah. Yep, I get that. Um, I the midfield's so hard because the averages and points are usually a, a lot higher. So um, I I don't have Tom Green 
top 10 either. He, even though he's in my side right now, I think he's going to go 110 plus. I just have all, all these guys going higher. Well, you'll probably be shocked with names I don't have. Like I said, and you said, I've gone risky and I think I've showed it already. <laughs> you, you definitely have. My number nine is Jack McRae from the Western Bulldogs. I think, as I said last year, we're going to see a slight decrease, the the decline in Jack McRae's scoring. We definitely saw it last year when he was playing forward for half the season. Um, in the intra-club, um, because they, they didn't actually play against someone um, properly, uh, he played a, like a 50-50 split mid-forward, which is concerning, but that could have just been Bevo giving other guys a run, so we're not 100% sure, but we know McRae can get the pill. He's a good user. He likes to kick it, um, can hit the scoreboard here and there, uh, but he just accumulates the, the pill. Um, I was... Te- Tempted not to have him in the top 10, but I think he's just too good of a player to drop that far. Um, and as I said before, Merritt could have easily taken that that nine spot, but I've just got McRae there just because he usually does a full season, not half a one. Um, yep, so that's my number nine. So who's your number eight, mate? Well, before we say anything, Jack McRae is someone that did not make the list. Big call, big call. I like it. And my number eight is Zachary Merritt. (laughs) You can bin off Darcy Parrish. Darcy Parrish is no good. Zach Merritt's the man. He's always been the man. He always will be the man. And now he's the captain. He is going to be fantastic. Now, I don't know why I said it like that. Dramatic effect, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> um, but, you know, Zach Merritt, I can see him going back to that 115, 116, which I think just jumps the eight. Um, you know, maybe even a 117. Um, I think the top six all average over 120, <laughs> which is a bit crazy. Definitely. But can, yeah. I think... I think my top six all average over 120. If it's 120 on the dot or higher, my um top six, I had a very hard time. Um, You'll also notice there's players that have missed out that um, I'm huge on and you'll be shocked. And I'm like, I've got to go risky for the boys. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, so Zach Merritt is number eight for me. All right. My number eight is Andrew Brayshaw. Um, as Jack was saying before, he, he sees an improvement and so do I. The only thing stopping Brayshaw is can he get past that tag? He started to towards the end of last last season, which is um, a step in the right direction, but can he do it consistently? That's my only problem. I see him definitely going 115 plus. Um, but looking at at my list, Jack, you said you had six people going 120. I potentially have seven. So um, I think Brayshaw just misses out there. I think he goes 117, 118 max. So, um, yep, Brayshaw is in at number eight. Who's your number seven? Brayshaw. Yep, okay. <laughs> um, no, you said everything I had. I reckon he averages at uh, 118, um, which just has him out of my top six. Um, but he could also have the potential to go 120. Um, people are worried about a tag. I'm not worried about a tag. It's Andrew Brayshaw. He's, he's going to do the Chuck Rob Crowley and Matt DeBoer on me. It doesn't matter. Two on one, I'll win every time. And he's just going to kill it and take his game to the next level. Yep, fair. Definitely could could happen. I'll, I'm just worried about that tag because he hasn't proven it exactly. But if you oh, think yeah, no. it, it, it's the year, then it's, it's the year. I'm going to back you in. Oh, I'm backing him in, so... <laughs> <laughs> my, number, my number seven is Jack Steele, someone who has gone 125 plus. I've got him here at number seven because I think he's going to go a flat 120. 
um, injury season last season, as we know, but when he came back, he still was consistent, just didn't have those big breakout, I guess, games where he went absolutely nuts. But I think full preseason, um, I don't think his role is going to change too much. Um, I think he's, he's fit to lay some, some tackles, which is what, what I think let him down last year. So I think Jack Steele's going to return to form. Not his ultimate best. I think that might be next season, but definitely this season I see him going 120 in at my number seven. Um, and looking at my list, Jack, I have no clue who you've left out. So this is going to be interesting. Who is your number six? Well, this might give a hint with um, how risky and shocking my midfield is. My number six is Lockie Neal. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And I'm not expecting. I'm not expecting him to go exactly the same. I reckon he loses a few points here and now. I reckon he gets. 120 to 122 average, which is around the same, but I just see players enhancing their scores to get ahead of him. Okay. And now you're saying that um, Lockie Neal was third. There's someone in there that you'll notice at the end I didn't chuck in, and he was a top six player last season. I don't have him in the top ten. So you're be shocked with that, but Lockie Neal is a ball magnet, loves a handball more than a kick, so that's where I think a couple of players jump him. Um, but like I said, I've got six people at least that's averaging 120, and he's the bottom of the pecking order for me now. Six, six and four could really, you know, could switch. It was they're very tight in my opinion, but yeah. I think the uh, ability that the other two possess in using their foot over their hands has their scores just uh, average go higher than Lockie Neal. Yep. Lockie Neal still a must-have. Do not get me wrong. And I could be completely wrong with this, and I will, put, I will not put my hand up and say sorry because I am saying it with chest. No, fair. I, 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 I like how you think outside the box because I'm... I'm I'm more yep this is it where you're like hang on but if this happens this person here and then yeah I I I love the way you think that, that um it's a hangover scene where um they're in the casino and there's just all those numbers that's <laughs> in my head when it comes to super coach <laughs> yeah, fair, fair um my number six is I I think this is the man that you might have left out Marcus Bontempelli is in at my yeah. number six. That's an interesting prediction. <laughs> if you have left, <laughs> I don't know how you've done it, but anyway, <laughs> the Bond is going to play more midfield time. I feel I think he's still going to have a, a good chunk up forward, but I think he's going to get that extra fifteen to twenty, possibly percent. Um, more midfield time, and I think he goes 120 to 122 this season because um, he could still go forward, kick those goals, but if he's around that contest more, I think he's just going to eat, eat that ball up and get leather poisoning. Um, and um, champion Dada, love him. He, he seems just to score points when, when he does fuck all. So... Um, yeah, I've, I've got the point in at number six. All right, Jack, let's see who you have left out. So who is your number five? So my number five, funny enough, I had him at number three. And then I was there and I was like, look, there's Risky. Then there's Chuck Noah Anderson in at number 10. And then there's just idiotic chucking him at free. It's just un it's just unrealistic. And my number five, it's going to be a massive shock to you, but it's Marcus Bonton Smelly. Oh, okay. Um practically like you said, he's going to have a jump. Um he's going to you know, yeah, he's more midfield time, more scoring from him. Um he seems to have games where he has 10 possessions and still score 120 super coach and everyone's scratching their heads like, look, he's good, but 10 touches isn't 120 super coach. 
Like, he does some stuff backstage that uh, we probably can't talk about to get those scores, I, I believe. And his nose might not be, his nose might be a big factor. Um, <laughs> him, let's just say him and Gil are good friends, eh? Um, but yeah, no, um, I, like I said, I had him at three to start with. Um, and then I'm like, three's just unrealistic. Let's be serious. So, um, and then four, I was like, oh, I think this guy can go back and be a bit higher, but I think Bond gets that 123, 124, um, average and dominates. Yeah, fair, fair. Um, number five, I have Hook Miller, um, has got a slight hamstring problem at the moment, uh, missing both the practice and the official pre-season game, whatever the hell it's called these days, but should be good for round one. Um, I think he started really slow um, or had periods of just where he just couldn't seem to hit hit that ton. But I think this year Miller is going to go back to close to his best. Um, I think we're looking at a 123 to 124 average here from Miller. Um, absolute beast. He was looking fit until that slight hamstring strain. Um, I think he's just, yeah, he, the, the Suns are a better team. They've gotten better. Their midfield's developing. Now you could say, yes, that could take points away, but I think that en enhances it a bit um, it's because they can now win the ball so he can be that chain handball where before it was basically if uh, Miller doesn't get it, the Suns don't get it. So Miller in at number five for me. Who's your number four? So you had him at about nine or eight. And it's Robert Downey Jr.'s favourite AFL footballer. I'm not sure if it actually is. I know nothing about Robert Downey Jr., but it is um, Jack Steele. Okay. Um, people are saying we're going to see good scores from him. I'm saying he's back. He's back. He's going 125 plus, um, which, yes, it has my number one at about 128, 129, which is sounding a little ridiculous. But um, Jack Steele is back with Rowan Marshall tapping it down to him. Super coach galore for the two of them. Um, you said a lot, tackles well, um, gets plenty of the ball, hits the scoreboard, cap. Mr. Captain fries under it. Um, last year he had injuries and a little slow start, which obviously hindered his spot and his scoring output. Fit this year, big boy, chuck him in. Obviously, chuck him in, but um, uh, he's going to be top four this year. Yep. Okay. Yeah, oh, I had him at seven. Yeah. Um, all right. My number four is Callum Mills, which is a big call. So I think he got, what, was it 119 la last year? So I, I think he's going another five more, going that 123, 124 mark. So similar to Miller. I think he, you know, one will be like 123.2 and the other will be like 123.6. Um, the only concern I, I have with Mills is he's missed a fix it, could go into that defence. But what I'm thinking is with the two McCartans down there, you have Lloyd, Rampy, Blakey when he plays. Uh, you've got Campbell down there. And I think the inclusion of Aaron Francis might help Mills out a little bit. That that bigger, mature age body that can play on that third, third tall. I think that's what will happen, which means Mills won't have to go down there too much as long as none of those guys get injured. Um, but he could easily go 125 plus if he gets full midfield time. He just... He scored 214 last year. Like, what else 
you want me to say, you know, like the reason he's a bit lower is because he can drop those 60s, those 70s because he's playing in, in defence. But if you put them away, he could easily be n- number one. He could easily outscore and out-average Clary and, and lead. Like, it, 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 he just has so much potential. Horse long, long line just needs to play him in that midfield. And I think there'll be less de- defence um, this year. Um, and that's why I only have him at number four. But 123, 124 average for me. So... All right, mate, who's your number three? Took Miller. Okay. You've now, you've hamstrings. Hamstrings, ooh, hamstrings, ooh. He's fine for round one. Doesn't matter if people tag him, he still takes the piss. Um, he's he's the man that you when you go, you're like, shit, we're playing Gold Coast. Let's just chuck 18 players on Took Miller and hope no one else can Gold Coast can touch it. But you're still going to see Took Miller get 30 disposals with 18 people on him. Like, you can't stop him. He's 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 like the uh, LeBron James or Steph Curry of the NBA. It's not how do you stop him. It's let's stop everyone else and just let him do his thing. And if we stop everyone else, we'll be all right. <laughs> like you can't stop him. There's like you just can't. <laughs> so that's why I've got him. It's impossible. That's why I've got him at three. I just think he's going to be consistent. I reckon they're overplaying the hamstring a little bit. Obviously, they're saying he's fine for round one, but I reckon it's just precaution to leave him out this weekend in the official pracky. Um, so, yeah, I reckon he's going to go big. Yep, fair, fair. Um, number three is Lockie Neal. I think mm-hmm. he's going to go 125 this year. Um, slight injury concern on the weekend, but he came back on, he played, and then they're like, okay, you've you've had enough, we'll take you off, we'll rest you. Um, but he should be okay. I'm pretty sure it's just a cork fly or something, so nothing too major. Um, everyone's saying, what's going to happen with Dunkley? Um, that, that's come in. I don't think anything's got going to happen. I just think... No, no. You know, they're going to be the two main guys this season. And, they, you know, Dunkley can easily go 110 to 115 and Clary can still go that 125. So You mean Neil? Uh, yeah, Neil. Sorry, not Clary. Clary's definitely going 125. There's no problem about that. Um, yeah, so Neil at three. I'm interested to see who do you have number two. Well, you might be looking at me like, you bloody drongo. And I've got Rory the racing car. Rory Laird at number two. Now, the thing is, with Laird and my number one pick, um, I can see it's going to be like a 0.1 or a 0.2 difference. Um, it's going to be very close, but they're going to be two, three, four points above number three like this year. Um, I've gone Rory Laird to basically because he plays for Adelaide. You got no one in the forward line to kick two. You got no one in the midfield to pass it to. You got no one in the defence to give you the ball. That's a big hindrance playing for the crumb. <laughs> and I think the fact that he's at the crumb is hindering his scoring potential. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's why I've got Rory later number two. Um, obviously. People would say, like, if he wasn't on Adelaide, I reckon he's got a brown line to his name. Um, Fair call. Um, yeah, just Adelaide sucks, and he's he's the shining diamond in a pile of shit. <laughs> the diamond in the rough. The diamond in the rough. <laughs> yep. Um, uh, so for the first time this video we've got the same person in the same spot i've got rory led number two um i i'm just backing clary to go absolutely fucking nuts this year well so. you've ruined your number one now <laughs> oh it's pretty obvious like if if you don't have clary number one and you have bloody mills there i'm gonna lose my shit <laughs> um led Similar to Sicily, you can just back him in for 120. 
Um, his low score is going to be a 105. He's a VCC option each week. Um, he's made his way into my side, a little sneak peek, um, at my F1 spots. Oh, it's not F1, M1 spots. Sorry. Um, yeah, he just gets the ball. He tackles. It's just, yeah, I, I agree with Jack. If he wasn't playing for Adelaide, he'd win a Brownlow. If it wasn't last year, it'd be in the next couple of years. So, Rory Laird there. And Jack, don't even try and joke. Who's your number one? It is Harry Perryman. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, it is obviously Callum Mills, Clayton Oliver. One of the two, it's Clayton Oliver. Um, I just think playing for Melbourne helps his scoring a lot. Um, yeah, um, he's Mr. Consistent, and obviously because he's got the great team around him, it obviously helps with his super coach scoring. I, I do believe if you switch Oliver and Laird, Laird in Melbourne, Oliver in Adelaide, Oliver's probably an eight to ten super coach option and Laird's number one, because um, Oliver's disposal efficiency is a bit wonky at time. Having that great team around you who can get to that shaky kick to still for it to still be a effective disposal obviously helps. Um, but yeah, at, obviously at Melbourne, and he's the number. He's that guy. He is that guy at Melbourne. He's the like, guy. Petrarca, Push him, get the broom, go go to full forward, mate. Step aside. Clayton Oliver is that guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I said, him and Laird, point one, point two difference, which I think goes to Oliver just because of the team he's on. Obviously helps with the scoring. If you look good in a good team, you get better scoring. If you look good in a shit team, scoring's hindered a little bit. Um, so, yeah. Like, there's not much more really to say about Clayton Oliver. Yep. He's the big red machine. <laughs> yep, uh, I've got Clary number one as well. Um, I see him going 129. Um, I think he goes two points clear of Rory Laird this year. Um, a lot of people are worried, uh, but uh, Goodwin said they're going to get, you know, have eight people in the midfield, so he's going to lose CBAs. It's the number one midfielder. Cosy Pickett's going to get maybe five midfield CBAs a game. He's not going to be in there much. They're overhyping it. <laughs> um, he, he, he was in a fair few on the weekend. but um, Yeah, anyway, that, that, that's a tracky game. Clary's the number one midfielder. If anyone's going to lose CBAs, it's going to be your Vineys or your Patrakas. You need Clary in there. Um the, the pig it up. The, he's, he's just a pig and the good sort of pig. Um, oink, oink. <laughs> <laughs> just gets the ball. And I mean, when he plays Adelaide, he d double tons up. So um, he's in at my M2. So I've got Led and Clary in my side at the moment. Um, so uh, I can see you're surprised there, Jack. Probably thinking, how have you got everyone else in your side? But we'll get to that in a couple yeah, of weeks. How the fuck do you have a team with them two in your team? When, that, that, when, when that's ninety percent of your budget. Um, <laughs> well, Jack, I, I have four primo forwards as well, so there, there you go. Um, anyway, that that's this for... man's running Jack Bowes at D one. <laughs> I've got Stuart and Dacos as well. We, <laughs> we, this we, man's got a summer at a Galea at all. We, we, we English and Marshalls. So. <laughs> um, anyway, it's Clary. Oh, oh, he's he's, <laughs> he's, he's going to fucking go insane. So Clary is obviously number one. Um, all right, Jack, can you just quickly... Because that's um, both defence and mid um, done and dusted. Can you run through your top 10 defenders and then your top 10 midfielders in order from 10 to 1, please? So my top 10 defenders. Daniel Houston, we have a problem. Mason Redman, the target. Elliot, yo! Hayden Young. Samuel Doherty the fourth, the second best mullet in the comp, comp Jack Sinclair. K 
Captain Shin, Jordan Dawson. Brownlow medalist, Nick Dacos. The Bull, James Sicily. And the best defender, Tom Stewart. And your uh, mids? Top 10 mids. At number 10, Noah Ray Anderson. At number 9, Tom Green. Number 8, Zach Merritt. At number 7, Hamish's brother, Andrew Brayshaw. At number 6, the ball magnet, Lockie Neal. At number five, Pinocchio himself, Bonton Smalley. At number four, the Iron Man of the AFL, Jack Steele. At number three, the LeBron James of the AFL, Took Miller. At number two, the Diamond in the Rough, Rory Laird. And at number one, the Big Red Machine, Clayton Kane Oliver. Nice, thank you. Um, can I, can you quickly, um, just run through why Mills didn't make your top 10? Look, I love Mills. Um, it's that Mr. Fix It, I feel like it's going to, ha- I, I can see Sydney getting worse this season than they were last year. And we saw last year he went into the defense a lot, especially towards the second end of the year. Um, I think Sydney sit around that 8th to 10th spot. Obviously, that means they're losing more games. They're going to be worried more. Horse gets very defensive. He even starts games defensive if he wants to. And that ch- chucks Mills there. So I feel like he's going to have to be Mr. Fix-It more this year because we've seen, and this is historically going, teams that get smashed in the grand final don't make the 8th the next year. Um, we saw the Bulldogs last year miss out, the Giants in 2017, you know, um, it happens. Back in the day. Yeah, it happens a lot. So I feel like that score, like history is going to repeat themselves and Sydney's going to struggle a bit this year. They've already said Franklin's not going to play every week. He might play every two, three weeks. That means that Logan McDonald's going to develop, which we've seen Logan McDonald. He is Sean Hampson 2.0. Um, you know, it's going to affect their scoring and their play style. And if they're not winning games or they're winning closely, Horse immediately chucks Mills there. And like I said, I love Mills. If Mills had, a hunt, you know, played majority midfield like he did a few seasons ago, I think he's top three. Um, but it's just that Mr. Fix-It and historically... Grand final teams that get smashed perform poorly the following season. I can just see him plugging holes too for too long. There are obviously big games against Hawthorne and Adelaide where they won't need to, and he's going to go huge. But there's going to be games with the top one to probably 12, 10 to 12, where they're going to be close games and they're going to be chucking him around to different places to try and get that um, win, the small margin wins. And that's why I don't have him in my top 10 because I feel like it's just going to ruin his scoring too much. Okay. Well, that was the longest short summary I've ever bloody listened to. Um, But number two... Um, so you think he's going to drop 15 super coach points? It's not more that he drops 15 super coach points. It's more the players there jump in yeah. super coach points. Yes, but he's but... Go, he's going to drop, right? I I can't. I don't think he. I think he averages around 110, if not a little lower, or just a little bit higher. Like in between that 112 to 108, 107, I think that, he averages. That still puts him ahead of Anderson and possibly. But I have, Green. I I have Anderson and Green being able to score 113 and 115, so it has him just out. It is okay. Okay. All right. Well, um, we'll see how we go season's end. Um, is there anything you want to add before I go through my my team and then sign off? Obviously, I could be completely wrong, and no one makes the list. But like you said at the start, and I said, I love a risky pick and a risky opinion. And I think Mills is the perfect example there with that. That's why I don't have him. Yep. Um, 
Obviously, it could be completely different. Sydney's the best team in the comp, and he's just pure midfield, and he averages 150. Um, but I, I'm just going off a historical background and stuff like that for that, and obviously I'm expecting young players and players who are a little inconsistent to become more consistent and take their game to the next level, and that's why I've put them in. Yep. That's practically about it. Okay, fair, fair. All right, I'll go through my top 10 defenders. So I've got Nick Vlostin at number 10, Hayden Young at number 9, Adam Sard at 8, Jordan Ridley at 7, Jack Sinclair at 6, Sam Dockley at 5, the Brownlow medalist Dacos at 4, Jordan Dawson at 3, Tommy Shield at 2, and James Sisley at 1. And my midfield goes Merritt at number 10, Jack McCrae 9, Andy Brayshaw at 8, Jack Steele at seven, Bont at six, Tuk Tuk Miller at five, Callum Mills at four, Lockie Neal at three, Led at two, and Clary at number one. Um, as Jack said, these are our own opinions, um, so don't hate us. With you know, we could throw stuff out there um, that you know you might not agree with but that's okay you know we all have our own opinions we're, we're here having a good time trying to enjoy the game of super coach um but that's going to do us for today's podcast so don't forget um we have the break evens unlimited group we have 109 people in there so four three two eight five six is the code so make sure you join those trying to get to 150 um what did you think of our top 10 list is the list fucked probably but who cares um we're, yeah. here, we're here for the list is fucked we're here for a good time so don't forget you can hit us up on our socials um which is on twitter at break evens pod you can hit us up there um as i said before interacting a lot over there which is great so make sure you drop a question down there on YouTube, you can find us at The Break Evens. Put a comment under this video. Tell us what you think and hit the subscribe button. We're trying to hit 100 now because 50 has been ticked off. We've got 62 at the moment, so 38 more to go. So thank you all for watching and listening to us ramble on and talk shit, but basically. But I hope you enjoyed the Pretty content. much all of these. Yep. So... Um, until next time, it's bye for now. See ya.